No business can function without a mission statement. Can you? I created a special course. Discover your personal mission statement. Check it out in the description below. So I'm not going to read the entire thing. Let's just read select verses. This was coming now the holiday season and Hannah saw an opportunity to go to the Holy Temple because she lived in the time of the Holy Temple and to pray to God for a child. And that's what she did. Eli, Eli, the high priest, was sitting on the chair beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord, God's temple. It's so hard to capture the Hebrew. The Hebrew has such a poetry to it and such a uh, subtlety, but also deeply emotional. The next expression is modas nefesh, vihi modas nefesh. She was in pain. Her spirit was in pain. When you read it, you feel, you can feel the pain. And you can empathize and you can relate to it because all of us have a moment or moments in our lives where we feel something deeply lacking. So this wasn't just coming out of nowhere, coming from a deep distress, the stress of the spirit. And she prayed to God and wept. She wept. And she made a vow. She said, Lord, if you look upon if you look upon the affliction of your servant, your bondswoman is the technical translation, and you will remember me, and you will give me a child, I shall give my child to you. And as she was praying, and she was elaborating in her prayer. Eli, Eli, the high priest, was watching her, was watching her mouth. But now the verse continues. And Hannah, however, she was speaking in her heart. You didn't hear words come out of her mouth. She was speaking in her heart. Only her lips were moving. And her voice was not heard. So the verse tells us a strange thing. Eli, or Eli, the priest, thought her to be drunk. Because there she is, speaking, no words come out of her mouth. She thought she was drunk. So Eli says to her, Until when will you be drunk? Throw off your wine from upon yourself. And listen now to her response. Hannah responds and says, No, my Lord, to Eli, to Eli. I'm a woman of distress, of a sorrowed spirit, a broken spirit. And neither new wine nor old wine have I drunk. I pour out my soul before God. I pour out my soul before God. And Eli, Eli realizes his mistake. And he says, go in peace. And God will grant your request. And indeed, as the story continues, she did become pregnant and she gave birth to Samuel. And she named him Samuel. Because Shemuel in Hebrew means, I asked him of the Lord, of God. It was a gift of God and she always was aware of that. This alone, without even interpretation, can tear your heart out the way it's documented, even those thousands of years ago. But it's the story of all of our lives. Who has not been in a state of distress, of despair? In the dire straits, in difficult moments. So the first thing we learn from Hannah is to pray with your heart. It's not the words you say, it's the sincerity coming from the depths, I pour out my heart to God. The whole story of Rosh Hashanah is that. Unfortunately, as it is often with organized religions or organized systems, they become bureaucratic, they become technical, they become corporate. And can lose 
the heart and soul of it all. So it's all about speaking from the heart. The deep feelings of a person crying out, whether it's we cry to our parents or to our friends or to God, it's about the sincerity, the heartfeltness. Secondly, it can be misunderstood. Even a high priest, what he didn't know people come to the temple to pray and they have to use words. But he thought she was drunk, not necessarily literally intoxicated, but drunk with her needs. She was self-consumed. And she says, I'm not self-consumed. I'm praying to God to give me a child. It's not just for me. So even when we ask for our needs, we recognize there's a deeper force going at work, a deeper force going on. Indeed, indeed, the Baal Shem Tov says that when a person cries out, even if it's for a physical need, it means their soul is crying out because there's a spiritual need. So we should not be bashful. We ask. And finally, that even when there are impediments and obstacles, you never give up. All channels can be opened. And especially on Rosh Hashanah. That's what Rosh Hashanah is all about. It's a new energy. It's a new birthing. It's also the birthing of a new moon. It's always the first day of the, heat, the lunar month. A new moon is born. All to teach us our ability to access newness in our lives. How often do we get trapped in the monotony, in the routine, or the way the cynics put it, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Even King Solomon in Ecclesiastes says, a generation comes and a generation goes. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing new. Maybe change of name, change of location, change of venue. But it's the same. No. There's constantly new pulsating energy brimming on beneath the surface. And especially in Rosh Hashanah, those doors open up. But we have to feel new. Because if you come with the old attitudes then even if the new energy comes into your life, you may not appreciate it. So we also have to have, approach it with a new way. And perhaps that's what Hannah meant when she said to him, neither new wine nor old wine have I drunk. I'm pouring my heart out to God. This is not subject to time. It doesn't, it's not about wine. It's not about newness or oldness. It's constantly fresh. When you're in need, who's counting? So there can be the physical womb that's closed, but there are other wombs that are closed in our lives. Sometimes we feel there's no hope, me finding my soulmate. No hope in other areas, we feel we've been hurt, disappointed, betrayed, traumatized. This story of Chana tells us that's all the past. Cry out from your heart. And you have the capacity to pierce the very heavens and to open up hitherto blocked channels. That from here on, something opens, a new opportunity, a new possibility. But I can't get over when you read the words again and again, where she says, I'm pouring my heart out. We live in a world where so many things that we say, the words we utter, are for all kinds of ulterior motives. We're selling things, we're buying things, we're negotiating, we're protecting ourselves. Talk radio. Talk. We talk and talk and talk. Even if it isn't gossip. But here we hear the real power of communication. Words may not come out of the lips, but the heart is speaking. The heart is crying. How many children are there right now whose hearts are crying and we don't hear them because we're listening for, listening, for, listening for sounds. The deepest sound of all is that sound of silence. There's a silent, gentle voice within. And that Chana also teaches us about that integrity, about that sincerity. Access that. Not so easy because we live in this world where we don't like to be vulnerable. 
But this is the moment. You want something new? You want to open up new channels? New channels? You open it up through opening up your own heart and soul. And words from the heart enter the heart. Even God's very heart. It's not just a human thing. That's what love is about. So as we are preparing to the curtain coming down on this past year and the new year is about to enter, I want to use this opportunity to wish you true newness that in every area of your life, whether it's small or big, or we're not measuring, the channel should open up. And do your part. Have the courage, have the strength, the fortitude, the wherewithal to speak from your heart. And it doesn't matter what anyone says, even the, what the high priest may say. You're speaking to God. The channels are direct. You don't need intermediaries. You don't need in-betweens. And when you do, those channels open up. May they be opened up for you, whether it's the blessing for children, healthy children, whether it's the blessing many of us have children. But there may be some connection that has been, I don't want to say severed, but has been compromised. May those channels open up to be able to reconnect with our children and them with us. Same with our spouses. Those that need a blessing for a spouse, for a soulmate. May we find that and those channels should be opened. Channels of blessings for livelihood in abundance. And open channels that give us the peace of mind and peace of heart. To not have to live duplicitously be able to find seamlessness in, our, sleep, seamlessness in our lives, to connect to our inner selves, that who you are and what you do are all integrated. May channels open up that eliminate the demons, the fears, the insecurities, the inhibitions that may have been caused by previous losses or disappointments or betrayals May we learn to discover our true selves. And that's the ultimate opening of the wound, womb, that we are truly born anew. We will say in the prayer of Rosh Hashanah, Hayom Harat Olam, which means today the world trembles and today the world is born. The word pregnancy and the word birth. Birthing will always come a new thing has to come with some type of transition, some paradigm shift. But let's not misunderstand it. That pain may be necessary in order to open up these new channels. So let us thank Hannah, and as we hear her prayer, this Rosh Hashanah, thank her for making us aware, thank her for paving the way, pioneering the silent whisper, the silent prayer. The one, however, that's more powerful than all the sounds in the world because it pierces, it breaks through all barriers. May you be blessed and written in the book of life for a healthy year, a sweet year, success in every endeavor. And may your prayers and requests be fulfilled and even the things you may not know you need, but God knows you need. Shana tovat everyone, to each individual. I look forward to to a new year with new programs and new activities and new interactions. And even though we may be the same people, but we have always new reservoirs and fountains to access. Be blessed. Happy New Year. Shana Tovah.